Hello and welcome guys back again on another Maya's video So on this video, I will show you how to make a wine glass So here are some few rendering images that I rendered out You see that this is the first one that I try using the just the extrude And then this one will be uh, using another tools And I will be showing how to do another glass Wine glass in another video But for now Here's the overall, this is just using extrude tools Alright, you will see that I have three glass setting up as an example Okay, so this one will be the one that we will be able to make By just using extrude tools And let me deconstruct you before I start showing you how to do I'll just deconstruct and show you how it look like and everything first Okay, if you don't want to watch this part, you can skip in the timeline In the description down below, just to skip into a part where I really show you how to make it Okay, so if you look at the glass carefully here on this first part i'm just using extrude tool so this is the basic shape of the glass you start with just another like i mean the cylinder shape and then extrude up 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 and up okay and then this one i will show you in the late of the video later in the video as well how to make the water as well and then on this video if you know if you manage to learn how to use this you will be able to create any shape that using cylinders as a base so let's begin the video then okay so in this video as i already said i will make a wine glass using just extra tools before we start we will need to go into google find any image the side view image of a wine glass in this case i already have it so here is the pictures of it so the way i import the files i click wheel a space bar to look at this for mirror for angle view which is this one and go to front c or sad access negative sad access image plane image and now find your folder or your files that you need it the image that you downloaded in this case i use this as a base all right so now what you think you need to do is go to this wheel by spacebar and then align it everything into like a square shapes here you see the free guideline grid system they have just align it as closely as possible as this base or the ground area here align it together that's all and then you go back here to the normal 3d perspective view create up a new cylinders but then when you click it it's just gonna pop up here which is not what we wanted you can go to create a polygon primitive and then use this interactive creation okay i will try to go, go as low as possible you just click that now when you click to create the cylinders you have this icon here which it will ask you like you can actually manually adjust the sign and how tall you want it to be by click and then drag and now you can drag up to set the height so now i'm just approximate the height maybe this height this tall should be fine i think that should be fine for now okay and now next thing you need to do is go to this wheel again front wheel of this shape trying to align it closely as possible you can see that should be fine for now because like we have reference doesn't mean we need to have like 100 percent look the same as the reference but we have like the ideas and the core idea of what it might look like okay and now i will need to change the subdivision and then if you have any questions or if you don't understand it, you can just comment down below and ask or you can just click on the eye icon on the top right corners to go and watch my previous two video where i start play around and then show you the basic tools that you will be found useful as uh, beginners trying to learn how to use maya okay so now in the subdivision i need to change something here so subdivision access you need to turn down it uh, not that much, not this much. First, it will be in 20s. For me, it, it is unnecessary to turn down, but I feel like you don't really need it to be that full round circles. So you can just use smoothing tools 
and then add more at the end. So I will make it like around 17. So the less polygon you have at the beginning, the better when you're creating a shape, like the, the polygon line, division and the edge. It create less issue at the, at the long run. And now I need to change the top cap area here. You see this area here, just turn down it to like zero. You don't need any faces in here. Just let it like, you don't really need anything in here. So just let it zero. And then the subdivision between height, you let it be one, which is between this line and this line. Okay. So now there's multiple ways to do it. You can just now, you can just click here and then extrude up, 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 up and up and up. But for us, I'll just delete this face here for now to show it easier and clearer to understand how it might look like. So now you just click on the edge, turn into right click, edge of it. Okay, now switch view to this wheel, full screen. Just select on the edge. So now this thing turned orange, you see? Okay, you just extrude it. Keep extruding according to the line of the shape here to, to the top. And then I will show you afterward what you need to do to make inside hollow and look nice. Okay. So if you ask me why is the extrude tool is this one. So before I'm, I'm just going to click extrude like normally and then just go up like so. So you see that this shape, uh, the big pictures reference that I have, it's not fully side wheel. If you have a fully side wheel image, that will be better. But in this, in this case, we don't have that. So I've just estimated, you can now you need to switch between two tools, between the scale tools and then the extra tools. That's all you need to switch between both. So I will just make it this wheel so you easier to see how it look like from the top down wheel and then I will just do this from the side, okay? So when you press G, G means repeating the last command that you use or last tool that you use. In this case, it is extrude. So now it's gonna extrude now. And if you have this problem, now you see that, oh no, what's happened now? Why is the shape look like this? It's not what we wanted. You, the thing you need to do is Command C or Control, I mean Control Z or Command Z C for Mac user. Click on this, I, some circle power icon or something like that. It will now change the axis to the normal centerized axis. Now you just move up, okay. And now I go to scale tools, which is R, remember Q, W, E, and R. To just start scaling down little by little. And G, do the same thing over and over again. So if you ask me how many like edges for each area, like spacing between edges you need, it depends on how curved you want the shape to be. So if you want it to be really, 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 really curved, like sudden curve, you need more edges on that area. Or you just want it to be like really straight, just little, little by little, but most of the time, just make approximately at the same air, like length between all of it. So here you go. Before I do anything else, I'll just do that. G move up a bit, R, to scale down. Now you see it's not gonna be in the exact same position, but we don't need to care that much. We just approximate here. We just do it roughly. We can always fix and add more edge loop afterward. But for now, you just use extrude and then scale. All right, now I'm gonna speed up the video so that it doesn't take that long for you guys to follow and wait along, okay. Okay, okay now, so now we have an overall shape of the glass itself, oops. So you see that it's not quite smooth as it need to be, which is not a big deal. All right, let's move this back a bit so you can see. Overall, it's kind of all right. 
So now, if you want it, you will see some of the part where if I turn on X-ray, you will see that some of the part quite not align it perfectly. And then you can just adjust that. As you can see down here below here, it's not fully look like a glass if you make doesn't this this part here. So what you need to do is, if you want to fix anything or you feel like it should be aligned or you should be moved somehow, you can either go back to edge mode here, double click on that. You can either move up and down a bit if you want it. Let's say I want to move down here. And you can go to scale tools, scales again, and then move it in a bit, bit by bit. You can just use the menu which is to move one and then move it a bit. Scale a bit. If you just want to be precise and then fix here and there. This part here kind of look odd. You can just scale up and then move it up a bit to create more like smoothness of the shape itself. So you see this part is kind of not correct somehow. Just move it in a bit, move it up. This part should move in a bit. So you can, you can see the ideas where I can, you can just adjust it whatever you want it, it to be. So now, so you see that sometimes you need to add edge loop on the area where you see sometimes glass itself have um like stretched area where do it's kind of curved more than it need to be, like the uh it's curved more than your shape that you already have. So you can just add more edge loop by go to match to insert edge loop. You can just add edge loop on this area. Then you can use scale tools, scale it up like so. So now you create more curve here. So you can see from the polygon here, I have a lot of like edge loop on this area, but then so little on the top, which is it's kind of smooth up already. So this area is just like more stressed earlier. That's why I tell you guys to start with minimal polygon as possible. So then afterward it's gonna be better. So now let's go back down here and talk about how it doesn't look accurate as it should be. So go back to edge loop which is match to insert edge loop. I should add a bit in the middle here. And now I can scale this up just a bit to create more curve in this area. And this area can just spin it. Oh it should. Sometimes it doesn't want you to select the like double click it doesn't select all of it. You just go in and then select similarities. So now it's gonna sh it should select all of it. Now I'll just make it tinier a bit and then move it up a bit so that it align accordingly to the different image we have. Okay, we can just move this up move this up a bit as well so there we go we get a somewhat a wine glass but then when you look at it oh damn it this thing is hollow and in real glass it doesn't look like this if you preview this out right now it's gonna look so stupid like where is the shape like the inside just gone you cannot see anything from the inside let me just show you what it looks like without anything else just the inside Okay, let me just preview the render. It just look weird, like it just look like a void going inside, nothing in there. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we continue doing the same thing as we used to do, going up, but now we're going down. Okay, so let's go back to edge mode. This part do not need to be ac as accurate as you need to be. Okay, so you just start off with I'll just show you. Extrude. Oh, wrong button. Extrude. Now. Same deal. Click that. Small it out. Before you starting, you just look at here. I just make it a little bit tinier here. And then move up a bit. Just a little bit. Little bit like so tiny that you can't even see it by your eyes from far away. So this will create a center Like a uh, edge of the glass. I don't know how to say Where your glass start curving down. So now when we do it again We just make it smaller Most a bit more smaller you, you can see from here. So you see I'll make it a bit more smaller and now going down 
right? Huh. So now just start off with like so going down a little first, and then you need to go down more afterward. This part is just all about measuring by your eyes. Don't need to be perfect, but then if you master this, you kind of make it look better in a way. And for now, we just do it real quick and then make it like approximately what you wanted it to be. So now you just go down, 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 down. Inside here, you don't need to be accurate. So as I said, you can go down this far from here, really far down. And then you can just scale it a bit like that. Align it approximately the same area. Amount of it should be the same. I'm gonna do that again. Go down, 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 down. I'm just using grid, this grid as a measuring point here. There. So the more accurate inside you'll have, the more better it will become. But then, at the same time, no one's gonna look inside your glass that often. So, in so now on here, I'm just stop midway so that I can make it more expanding bigger from the inside and then now I'll go here so you see now this is a stress point where the shape starts changing dramatically I'll just move it in a bit and then extrude more so if you ask me what it look like if you go beyond what you like the area you have it's gonna look like that the inward side come out which is not what you wanted trying to keep it inside as possible G, down, 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 and then R, scale tools, go in. You don't need to be as accurate as it need to be. I keep reminding you guys that, cause like we are learning how to use the tools, we're not mastering it to make a shape to sell or anything. We're not making selling models and stuff like that. So the thicker the inside here is, the more light will be reflected and restored in the shape itself. So it's going to look different when you have a thinner glass or thicker glass. But then, it depends on the effect you want it then. I don't know how much different it will get, but as a wall, it doesn't make much of a difference. So now you kind of reach the bottom line. For me, I'll just extrude a couple times to make it look like it's really denting in like that and then that and then last one i will make it like really deep down here and then one more it depends on how much you want it this one i will make it so now if you look at the shape here you have a tiny hole in the middle. So now, you can bridge it into the middle or just leave it like so. And then what you need to do is click bridge tool, which is gonna hopefully bridge in the inside. There you go, done. Now you get a glass, wine glass. Here you go. So now you have wine glass, what's next? You add water inside. This is unnecessary if you just want to have a blank glass. But then, why not, right? We just feel like we need to add something inside. But before we add something inside, I want to show you this hyper shade that I have been made as a preset. There you go. And then if you want it, you can press three to smooth it in. See, now it looks so perfect and nice without need to smooth it, actually smoothing it. See, one, two, two is showing between both of it, and then three. Now you have a really, really clean looking glass. I don't want to go into like those photoristic rendering yet, so I will make a separate video about that after this two part where I show you how to make it, okay. Next up, water inside. Let me go back to one first. This one is fairly easy. You see this one, paint selection. You go in, press B, hold B to make it smaller. Now I'll just click in surrounding inside. Your default, there you go. I want to use default material first so that you can see the shape of it. 
I should change it to face there. I'm sorry. Go to face mode and then select that on the inside. Now it depends on how much water you have. You want the wine to have. For me, the normal ones like look kind of nice. It's kind of like one third of the cup or the glass in this case, which is this much. So what you're gonna do to do is after you uh, pen select the object, as you can see, you will be clicking on uh, match. Um, it is match if I remember correctly, and then duplicate. So now after you duplicate that, you will be getting new shape from that. You need to deselect everything out first. So now you need to deselect everything by clicking outside. You don't select anything back to object mode and everything. Now if you click the inside, just the inside, you can just drag it up and then drag it out. Now you see that you have this water, I mean the shape, inside shape of the cup itself. What you need to do next is, as you can see here, reverse it so that you will not get the inside black part here anymore. Reverse that, just click reverse, nothing so special about it. Next is, it's up to you now. If you want it to be, go into edge mode. Realistic, abstract, or what kind of water you want it to be. For me, you can see that I add a, like a, like a tornado effect inside, but you don't really need to do that if your water is just being still. So my technique is that either bridge it in, extrude it in, and then bridge it like so by scaling tools, just like that. And then just, just do a couple more time inward like a flat normal waters. I will just show you the normal way. So you just move it in like that. And now you can just use add a bit of like rotation of the water a little bit. Just a little bit, not too much. If it's too much, you're gonna look fake. Scaling in, that's like that. I'm not a professional in like physics, so like water physics. So it's just like a matter of like guessing and try and error. You can, you can try without changing this. You can even try to do this to create a weird looking waters effects you see now it look like a waters and then you can move a bit up extrude more one more time now we need to centerize it there you go but then this time make it centers just do it totally in opposite way of it there you go and then one more i'll just leave it like that Narrow down a bit. So same deal. Close it up. Just make it a little bit smaller. And then double click that again. Bridge it in. There you go. You have somewhat a waters. Okay. So now you just put it back in same place. You see that the when you select that, that this thing kind of be in the wrong position, you can go into uh, modified center pivot point and then just drag it down to the right place it's supposed to be. Approximately though, not fully perfect. So you can use this side wheel thing to actually make it precise as possible. There you go. Now in shaders, oh wrong one show the materials now it still look like both of it are glass now we need to create another hyper shade which is the waters i don't want to go into like those proto realistic thing again i'll just use another blend and then you press three and three and smooth it out so now it doesn't look like much from here if you use the normal maya the color and hyper shade it's just a way to like show you what it might look like doesn't mean that it's gonna look like that for real that's why i'm just it doesn't look as realistic as it should be it's just like a way to maya to show you what it might look like 
Okay, so after you have the oval shape you need it, here is the wine glass. It's done. Yes, it doesn't look as impressive. So, I will show you how to use the hyper shade afterward, after this two part video, where I will show you photorealistic lending using Arnold. But then I'll just give you a like tiny glimpse of what it might create. You see, everything changed. Photorealistic shaders. And then I'll just go with glass. There you go. Same deal. Group that's in. So how do you group it? Select the last, the inside one first and then shift, click another one, press P. So now whatever you select, P is you need to select the bigger object afterwards so that it's gonna be a part as one. So now it's one of the itself. You go to Arno render. You can't see anything. Just kidding. <laughs> you need to add a light, which is I already have a preset light here. And then the ground, background. Come on, do something. Wow, that's not red at all. <laughs> the weird thing about this is that I'll just open it like that so you can see. The water inside is not red because the way I set up the the reflection colors and everything is different so I'll just use this one this one is the better looking water one you see the color perspective in the system and in the rendering is different I don't want to go full and detail what it is but then if you know how to use Arno you just add assign Arno and then you have a preset of it that's all okay here you go now we have a wine glass See, the reflection here doesn't look realistic that at all. But then what do you expect from the way I set up light is not normal, that's all. There you go, you have a photorealistic glass of wine. Okay, so I hope you enjoy and learn something about this in this video. On the next part of this video, I will show you another way how to do wine glass. If you know how to use these tools, extrude tools, you basically able to create any shape that using cylinders. Extrude out, 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 the cup, water bottles, cone, everything that you extrude to. The limitation is up to your imagination and the way you perceive objects. So my plan here is just to showing you multiple ways to do object if you have any questions or if you want me to try to create some shape or some object you can comment down below and sometime i will might just make video like this again and then using all the tools uh knowledge i have to create that shape and you guys can follow along okay so let's before i signing out and going out of this video let's just compare something is it two of this different Using the same image reference, is it different? Not quite, right? I hope that this video is not too long for you guys to just follow. I will try to cut and make it really, really shorter than this. So don't forget to share and subscribe. Any questions you can ask down below. And then again, see you guys on the next video. Hope that you learn something. Bye.